How's it going guys? Jacob DeWitty, jacobdewitty.com. Here to make music with purpose and help take your songs from idea to reality. Today I'm gonna to talk about my entire process for mastering music. So whenever I have a client, this is the exact process I'm gonna use. My process is number one, all the general stuff, volume fades, reference tracks, the aim of the mastering. Number two is the final mix check, getting that mix really well done, taking care of any little mistakes. Number three, tonal balance on all systems. So that's speakers, studio monitors, headphones, phone, laptop, whatever, anything people listen on. I check it on all of those. That's EQ and compression. Then you have sweetening, which is the creative effects. So I like to use saturation. There's a lot of other creative effects you can use. And then you have all the technical loudness. So Spotify, I usually, that's my general rule with Spotify. Negative 14 LFS, negative one true peak max. And then of course the playlist check, making sure the whole thing sounds great, getting it ready for release. I do offer one-on-one -on -one services, for mixing and mastering. I also offer consultations, everything to help you from idea all the way up to the release. So I'll just drag in whatever the final mix of whatever it is. And so we have this here. Maybe I want it to fade out. I can add that here with the automation, the volume. I'll make another video where I still start to finish how I actually master and I'll go through every step of the process but today I'm just gonna explain what steps I use so it'll be really fast so of course so this right here is the final mix we'll check that listen to it super close we'll go back to the mix fix everything we need to and then come back to mastering step three is tunnel balance on all systems that's EQ and compression making sure the frequencies all low mid high are pretty balanced out, making sure the levels are balanced out for the whole song. So I'll add this to track one, so I have a little more space. And as you see, I already have some general EQ. Then we have some additive EQ. I haven't really fully mastered this, but this is generally what it would look like. Maybe there's a specific frequency I want, but generally we're going super, super broad. So. I noticed in all my songs, I have very low voice and I like a lot of low instruments. So a lot of the times it'll actually sound like this. As you can see, there's not a lot of high end information. Everything's way down here. So that's where maybe I boost the entire top part. So that's balanced. And how we check this, there's actually frequency analyzers all these analyzer plugins, mastering plugins, where we can actually see this. So this is a free one called Span. So you can actually see where the frequencies are, and then you can go back, you can use the EQ and start adjusting it until it looks right. And of course, compression. We'll do this, we'll master it. We'll set out the ratio, the levels. So this is just so the track sounds pretty level the whole time. Good enough for radio, good enough for Spotify. We don't want one part in the chorus sounding way up here and one verse sitting way down here. So yeah, so I'll do general EQ, then I'll do some additive or subtractive EQ, and then I'll do some compression over the whole track. And this is another really good plugin. I could boost or cut the lows, the mids, the highs, everything like that. And then, of course, we have to check it on all systems. So it's going to sound very different on these studio monitors, to those headphones, to the laptop, to the phone. So we want to check out on everything. So maybe in studio monitors, the bass sounds great all the time. It's like, boom, yeah, let's go. But then on laptop, maybe it sounds distorted, then you can't really hear it. So that's why I check it on every single system. I'll check it in the studio monitors, I'll check it in the headphones, the laptop, and my phone. And I'll catch different stuff every time. So we just, that's a lot of... That's really the biggest part of mastering. Just keep going back and forth, trying to get it right on all systems. And then you have the creative part of it, which is sweetening. Mastering can be very creative, even though it is very technical. This is the creative part. My favorite thing is saturation. Saturation basically, exactly what it sounds like. It saturates every part of the frequencies. So it makes it sound more full, basically. And a lot of the artists I work with don't know what each of these different things sound like. But yeah, saturation makes it sound more full. I love using that. This actually boosts the lows. This just makes the lows sound really cool. I always use this as well, because a lot of my stuff is low-end information. So this is just a free plugin I found. Makes the lows sound pretty good. And you know, just other creative stuff like that. 
whatever you want to do. And then now we get into the super, super technical part. So this is where we talk about, this is where we talk about loudness. So Spotify, for example, this is where I usually focus on is Spotify. We have negative 14 LUFS and a negative one true peak max. So what happens is if you bounce a mix and just put that on Spotify, then Spotify will actually do this automatically and it won't sound good. It'll compress it down to negative 14 or it'll boost it up and it just won't sound good. So that's why we do it here in mastering. We wanna get it ready for radio and for Spotify. So how we do this is another analyzer plugin and all this stuff is free. So there's no excuse, there's no, oh, I need a crap ton of gear. Right here, boom. So as we see, it's a little bit too loud. Maybe there's a lot of different ways. I usually like using this loudness analyzer because then I could just check the output. If it's that far over, I could just do that. Same with the limit. So we just keep adjusting those levels, make sure the whole song, that's where compression comes into play because you don't want one part being at negative 10 and then another part being at negative 20, right? So that's where compression comes into play. But so this is really the step where we get it ready for Spotify. And once all that's taken care of, we we take a rest, come back with fresh ears, and then I do what's called the playlist check. I'll play, let's say Kendrick's album, and then I'll put this right in the middle. And if this sticks out for whatever reason, maybe Kendrick's song is a little bit louder, maybe his highs are better, his lows are whatever. Generally stuff will stick out and I'll be able to come back and listen to this and rework on it. So that's mastering. So like I said, you've got number one, general volume fades, reference track, what the aim of the mastering is. Then you have number two, the final mix check, getting all the little details. Then you have number three, tonal balance in all system. That's speakers, headphones, phone, laptop. That's EQ and compression. Then you have number four, the creative effects, you know, saturation, stuff like that. Then you have loudness, negative 14 LUFS, negative one dB, true peak max. And then of course, checking the full master, making sure the whole thing is ready for release. I do offer one-on-one -on -one mixing and mastering services and other services all the way up to release. I can even take care of distribution for you. If you're interested in that, links in the description. Watch this next and I'll see you there.